sure. I mean, Perspective Magazine right, um, Perspective. at the time yeah. was the most important thing that we put out. And at the time, we did four issues a year. Mm-hmm. Um, that went on for a while. And then, you know, when the economy crashed, whenever that was, you know, we had to make some cuts for sure. And mm-hmm. so we went to three issues of the magazine which we've done for many years now. And then this year, and it's always been 24 page magazine. Mm -hmm. This year we decided to do two 32 page issues because we've now introduced this electronic newsletter that Dan Klein's doing. So he's doing that every other month. So we can push out and get information to people much more quickly. And we can use the magazine for less of the, things that got to get out now yeah. and be a little more expansive on research or volunteer spotlights or whatever we're doing. So, you know, and then, you know, I, I also just to kind of get into the broader things of things that I do, I, I write pretty much everybody's speeches, Cardi so speeches, heard. Steve's speeches. Oh, um, really? You, you write all of them? Yeah. I mean, I don't really write stuff for Steve because, you know, he... <laughs> That guy is so smart, it's scary. And really? I, I would I would never presume to tell him how to talk about science, but I do review things and all the PowerPoint things that people put together. Anything that is produced internally by some staff member you, that will be seen by the public, they run it by me. And it's not really because I'm the expert. It's more so that I can make sure – that whatever messaging and information we're putting out is not only correct, but that it we speak in the same language all the time. Uh huh. You know, and that's quote unquote branding. A lot of people, when you talk about branding, you think it's just the logo or the graphics, which it is. Um, but it's also the, the message. entire messaging of how when people hear hear or see the tuberous sclerosis alliance whether it's online or kari speaking or whatever it is that we're always speaking in the same language and that consistency year in and year out pays off over time if that makes sense it does and nobody's ever explained it to me quite that way about branding that really is helpful personally i'm working with a startup and branding is just getting every yeah, getting everybody to understand the key points of the message is a lot. Right. And you know, ultimately, I mean, we we spoke earlier on about, you know, the language around the linchpin disease and you know, when we started talking about that years and years ago, it's been really cool over time. I mean, you know, I was sitting here in Toronto at the research conference and the researchers use that language now. And wow. if you go to DC, the parents use that language when they're speaking with their Congress people. And as staff, we use it all the time. So, you know, that little <laughs> phrase, TSC is a linchpin disease that can benefit our understanding of other diseases like cancer, diabetes, and autism has permeated everything that we do. And that's a great example of simplistic language as part of branding that over time just becomes part of your culture or whatever it is. Right. So, yeah. That's interesting. So as far as your, your career at the TS Alliance, what are you like the most proud of? I know you, I have a note here about the IMTSC hashtag, another kind of. Yeah. Um, or whatever you, know, you want to talk. Hit yeah, that. I mean, I I alluded to a little bit earlier on about the messaging, and it, I think it was ugh, I'm terrible with years, but 2009, 2010 ish, when we hired this outside firm to kind of help us with our messaging, um, that was kind of the beginning, I think, of when it's not only my job, I think, or, or my responsibilities of communications, but that. When we started that whole process, that was kind of the beginning of when the staff, the board, and our volunteers all started getting on the same page. Okay, that makes sense. So that, I think, and that was right after a year or two after Kari became CEO, where everything just started falling together. We started hiring 
and getting the right staff, many of whom, as you know, have been with us more than 10 years, which Mm -hmm. is completely unheard of in nonprofits. Really? Why is that? Why is it that people... Yeah, what's why is there such a high turnover? Is it you know, I think in nonprofits in general, and I'm this is just in general and anybody just a stab at it. I'm not looking at it. Yeah, you know, I think most people in nonprofits, a typical tenure somewhere would be two to three years because there's always um this challenge of working, particularly in small nonprofits, of how do you move up? Because Okay. You know, there's there's only so many places you can go. There's only so many jobs. Yeah. And, you know, you can get promoted like I did, you know, change your title or mm-hmm. whatever. But if you want to be blunt, more money, you typically have to move along to get a, a little bit okay. more money because nonprofits in general pay well. Not all of them. Most pay fairly and well, but it's not what you could make in the corporate world right. by any means. And so most people flip around to make more money or to do something different. I think we've been very lucky that our board made the decision around that time to make sure that our staff was paid competitively in DC nonprofit arena. And mm-hmm. so that helped. But I think for the TS Alliance, it's way beyond that. Yeah. But. Yeah, sure. So as far as what you're the most proud of. Oh, right. I'm, I'm very proud of the website for sure. Because, oh, you should be. You know, it's just, it's been. I can't tell you. I have that thing open all the time. Yeah, <laughs> me too. And, you know, it's just. Like I said, this is the fourth version, and I think this version, we got almost exactly where we need to be. And it's a very arduous, painful process sometimes. And, you know, we have a good vendor who I've worked with this entire time, and she gets it. Mm -hmm. And that's got to be important. So that's a big piece of it. I'm very proud of the branding that we do, and I think that people – I hear all of the time, not all the time, I hear quite a bit from other groups how impressed they are with how people view us from the outside, what our image is, you know, that type of thing. Uh So I'm really happy with that. And then you mentioned the IMTSC campaign. I can't really take credit for that. That was a great TSC dad named Eric DeMario who... Oh, Allison's um, husband. Yes. Okay. He's, man, just a great, great guy. And so this all happened as a result of the Ice Bucket Challenge. If you remember, ALS had the Ice Bucket Challenge. Every nonprofit in the world was, what can we do? And we, I even remember, I think we put together a, um, had a group of parents, I think, that wanted to come up with something, you know, what can we do to duplicate it? And Catching that kind of lightning in a bottle, I think, is like a a once-in-a-lifetime thing, and more power to them for being able to do that. I even thought at the time, what anybody does to try to emulate this is never going to hit that same mark. Yeah. So we were batting all these around, and I remember getting an email from Eric DiMario, and he said, hey, I'm a videographer. I want to do something. Uh And I remember telling them, well, we have videos. Have you watched this? Have you watched that? And we had had some more long form, kind of unlock the cure stuff with Julianne Moore in them. But he was like, well, you know, these 10, 15 minute videos really aren't working these days. I want to do something more direct, Mm -hmm. but I'm not really sure what it is. And so Kari and I hopped on a phone call with him, a few phone calls, and we were getting ready to do the 40th anniversary gala up in new york city and we had this play four decades uh one community that you know we were going to do that was going to go over the history and we had you know these celebrities coming so kari was like hey we're going to have these celebrities here what could you oh, do man. with them yeah now I, yep okay yeah so it literally eric even when we got there that morning to shoot well, it was the night before. I met him for the first time in the basement of this hotel in New York City, <laughs> and he had his laptop, and he said, here's my idea. I uh-huh. want to 
have the celebrities look at a camera and we're going to come up with these public service announcements, these 30 second public service announcements based on the hashtag IMTSC. So that's how that all started. Okay. So we filmed everything. It looked great. You have to kind of like, if you don't pay actors, you have to go through their unions to get permission. And there was a lot involved behind the scenes. And luckily, Eric lives in that world. So he was able to pull a lot of stuff. Oh, man, that's cool. Um, to get things done. And so I remember we had everything filmed and edited. And then we were like, what do we do with them now? <laughs> and so we decided, you know, you can distribute public service announcements to television stations, right? And so there's companies that will do that for you. So we hired this uh, firm in New York City um, to do the electronic distribution for us. Uh -huh. And there was like a one-year campaign for that. And we also decided, well, you know, I remember Eric flew to D.C. and we had a meeting and he was like, we really need a website. And um, we were like, well, we didn't budget for a website, but. <laughs> oh, you mean like an IMTSC website? Yeah. And so we were like, okay, how could we use this website? And so over the next couple of weeks, I pulled in our web vendor again. As I mentioned, we've used her for many, many years. And between, like, I think it was Kari, Lisa Moss, myself, Eric, and the web vendor, we just kind of sat around throwing around ideas. And then this whole imtsc.org came about. And even though we haven't focused on that campaign, so to speak, for a couple of years, that whole site and campaign still lives at, at imtsc.org. Mm -hmm. It's got all of the PSAs, but we use it also for kind of fundraising too, if people wanted to donate. And uh -huh. I, I don't recall it being a, you know, a huge fundraiser, um, but that whole campaign, once that year was over with the television part of it, we ended up getting $1.5 million value in media time, um, wow. which was unheard of. And um, the flip side of IMTSC, and I, I'll be totally honest with you, a lot of people were very upset with the words IMTSC. And I get it because I woke up one morning to an email from somebody who saw the, one of the PSAs the previous night. She emailed me directly, even though she didn't have TSC, she was livid that we would brand someone as, uh, you know, just being a disease. Mm -hmm. And her complaint was one of many, many yeah, okay. that we got. And there were people on Facebook who were upset about it. And, you know, luckily or fortuitously, whatever you want to say, Eric was a TSC dad. So yep. You know, it wasn't Jay Isham, who's just this communications professional, who came up. With, this was a dad. There were families involved who were behind it and uh -huh. agreed to do it. So um, that's a tough we, thing with dealing with something like tuberous sclerosis. Sure. Yeah, you know, and I totally get it. Yeah, and so we haven't focused big yeah. on that campaign in Makes years, sense. but every May when TSC Awareness Month comes around. IMTSC comes up, and in fact, this year, I, th I want to say it was in Hong Kong, we, Katie Smith, who, as you know, does yep. all of our global stuff, she got an email with a picture from Hong Kong with their residents standing, you know, in some big city block with these huge neon letters, IMTSC. We didn't even, we don't know these people. We never knew them before. They don't have a TSC association there, but here are people with wow. tuberous sclerosis complex in Hong Kong of all places using that hashtag. And I remember texting Eric going, dude, this is your legacy uh -huh. because, you know, it's been several years and this has just taken on its own life. And you well, know, I'll tell you when I, ha cool. I still use it and I see like when I go to hashtag something on um, Instagram, it, it tells you like how many hits this, you know, yeah. and it's still one of the more popular TSC tags. Absolutely. And like I said, it's just kind of this organic thing <laughs> that still they has got morphed into and, the. And yeah. In, yeah. You know, it's just kind of part of the thing. And many other countries use that now. And 
So, so that's another project that yep. just has been just phenomenal. And you never really know. I mean, people, some people were upset. Most people were behind it. And that first year, 